It's February. It's the season of love, guys. There's so much love in the world, and I have some of these games that I'm going to talk about right now. <laughs> But Dylan, that looks like it's from 1998. Why would I play that? Shut up. You probably know some people from 1998. Are you not going to talk to them because of that? Besides, this is the best aesthetic for most characters. I mean, look at all of them and look at all of the new additions that are present in this game. You can play as the Mad Piano from Mario 64. You can be the nightmare that you always had, inflicted on other people, finally freeing yourself from it. You can also play as Conquer, and something something, I think that's a pun about conquering the fear I just mentioned. We've got mainstays from future entries showing up here, like King DDD and Bowser. Bowser has actually a whole new moveset to complement his more classic appearance, I guess you could say. But with characters like Wario, his entire moveset's more based on the Wario Land series now instead of WarioWare. The craziest addition, however, is of course Sonic the Hedgehog, who has made it to Smash Brothers two games earlier than he was supposed to. He runs really fast, of course he was gonna get here early. Not only does he come with a Ryan Drummond voice mod for this adventure styled model, but he also comes with a completely silent classic Sonic skin, and you can even play as Super Sonic and just utterly decimate the competition. Him and the other new characters play so well too. I swear the CPUs at level 9 are a lot more aggressive than they used to be because the game overall plays better than it used to, and there's even a higher level 10 CPU difficulty which I am afraid to try and attack. At that point I think they come out of the screen to come get me in real life, they just take the controller from me. And if being beaten into the dirt isn't exactly your cup of tea, you could always play this game with friends on real hardware even, imagine Sonic on real N64 hardware, that doesn't seem right. Or you could play one of the numerous new modes that have been added, things like home run contest is accessible and my high score I think was around 5 feet. They've also made it possible to access things like race to the finish, board the platforms, and break the targets without having to play through single mode, and they actually added an entirely new single player campaign in the form of Remix One Player where you fight all of the new characters. And don't think they skimped out on the stages or music selection either, because there are now more stages than can fit on one page, which means I often forget that there are multiple pages. But if I really want to play on mementos from Persona 5 in Smash 64, I eventually remember to hit the button to cycle through the pages. Be careful though, because you might also hit the other button that turns off stage hazards and movement, and oh wait, actually, you should just do that, because that's an amazing feature, and this game literally has everything needed to make it one of the most fun Smash Brothers experiences I've ever had. I think the presentation helps with that a lot. Like, this is such an official looking mod. Like, they have an announcer voice for the new characters. They've all got alternate costumes. I love this project so much. Let's talk about the demo next. This one's called Cavern of Dreams. It's a nice little N64 styled platformer. You know what? There's a theme here. This is going to become much more obvious as the video goes on, but they're all platformers. Even Smash Brothers to some degree. It's a platform fighter. This is just my genre. I've been following Cavern of Dreams on Twitter for a while, and I wasn't really sure what kind of game it was before I tried it, but when I booted it up, Lo and behold, it's this adorable little game about a dragon looking for their siblings. Not exactly Spyro 3's plot, but I appreciate how close it is. And the Spyro comparison, I think, is at least partially valid. We do get a glide move a little bit into the game, and it does feel like you're exploring these lands in a sort of Spyro-esque sandbox. The first level has a lot of very gorgeous scenery. It's all autumn-y out, and things are orange, and god, it's so nice to look at. You heard it here first, game designers. Just put orange in your game, and I'll love it. You can hit these trees to get these apples that will then grow platforms, sort of like that minigame in Spyro 2. You know, the one in Zephyr that you do for the professor, the little platforms grow out of the ground. And I don't mean to offend or anything by comparing this to another game, it's just Spyro 2 and 3 are incredibly important games to me, I love them to bits. And this game is really channeling the feeling I get when I play those games, which is just complete and utter joy. 
This is one of those games where it's fun just to move around. If you hold down the R button, you start doing this roll move, and then once you get some speed going, you can uncurl, and then do this really precise little running move, and if you keep mashing the R button in such a way, you can just kind of run around like this. With all that momentum, you get some good jump distance, and you pair that with the gliding move you get later, and oh my goodness, this game is your oyster. Why do people say that? What does that phrase mean? The proverb first appeared in Shakespeare's play The Merry Wives of Windsor, published in 1602. In Act 2, a character named Falstaff says, I will not lend thee a penny. To which Pistol replied, Finding these little baby dragon eggs is always really cute, because the little guy just, he's like, Yay, look, it's my brother, and then they get teleported away back to the hub world. And depending on how many of your siblings you save, you will get a new ability. This is the kind of progression I really love for a game, because it makes me want to find everything I possibly can. Like, what is the next power gonna be? Am I gonna be able to do, like, a double jump or grab ledges? I think grabbing ledges should just be in every game, but sometimes you have to unlock it and you know, to each his own. And it was at this point I noticed one of the eggs in the room, like, popping off in the corner, and to my utter delight, not only does this game have the movement I like in a game, not only does it have the gameplay I enjoy in a game, not only does it have the mechanics I enjoy in a game, this game also has this little thing where you get to collect mushrooms in the levels and then feed them to the baby dragons when they hatch. I don't know what the purpose of this is going to be, but I'm really hoping it's something almost like out of Scribble Knots, like when they're fully fed and strong, perhaps you get a new skin for the main character, you can unlock more stuff like that, or maybe they'll help you unlock other things? I don't know exactly the lore of this world, so we'll see what hatches from this game once it releases fully. And due to my policy of not talking about games featuring eggs in succession, we will now talk about Pizza Tower, which is completely egg-free. Unless, of course, you count Easter eggs. It's amazing to have the final build of Pizza Tower finally in my hands after all this time. I've been playing demos for this game for a really long time, mainly the Sage ones, because obviously I was covering the Sonic Amateur Games Expo stuff. And looking back at this old demo, the game is so much different now. Like, in this demo, it does feel a lot more like a Wario Land title. The pace is much, much slower than the final product. You have to look all over for the toppings because at the end of this stage, they're required to break the pillar and start the escape sequence. This feels a lot like Wario Land 4. But the final pizza tower stands proud on its own two legs, and this game is something entirely different. Where Wario Land 4 is more concentrated on slowly getting to the goal, collecting everything, Pizza Tower is more about chaining together all of your moves to make this game as satisfying to play as possible. This game introduces a combo meter to the formula, and while I didn't pay much attention to it for the first couple levels, I found out later that every single level can be beaten in one combo, and that's actually paramount to getting the best rank possible in each stage. I haven't quite been able to master this yet, but go on YouTube and look up Pizza Tower P rank, and you're gonna see some crazy gameplay. Pepino's dash ability is a lot crazier than Wario's because if he jumps into a wall, he's able to scale literally anything in this entire game. From their bases, I would say Pepino and Wario are very similar characters in both their abilities and just character in general, but I think Pepino is what happens when you reintroduce human anxiety to the character. This poor chef is pushed to the literal brink of insanity and probably past it, all because his wonderful pizzeria is in danger. I believe I would stand up and fight for pizza as well. This is a relatable journey. What I love most about this game, I think, is that it is possible to hunt for every single secret and take as much time as you want in these levels to really grab everything. Or you can race through it as fast as you want, try and get the best time, and still grab what you see, because things aren't really that out of the way, like the things you need to finish the game can be found in a realistic amount of time, there's no crazy grind here. Most things in the level will contribute towards getting you better percentage for that level and also just game completion. 
The things you really need are the toppins, these little pizza topping guys that will follow you around and do little funny poses with you. Depending on what world you're in, they're worth a certain amount of money, and once you have enough money, you're able to unlock that world's boss door, and the bosses is where I think this game shines even brighter. Let's take the first boss, Pepperman, as an example. I don't want to spoil too much of this game because it is an experience that I think everyone should have. Plus, it's only $20. Just buy this game right now, please. You head into the boss room, and all of a sudden, you're thrust into this small room with Pepperman doing some very simple moves to try and get you. And this is where you notice you now have a health bar. In normal levels, you are completely invincible, and the game just keeps track of how many times you've hurt Pepino, and you get these horrifying little images in the top corner. Do not hurt the chef. But these boss fights are anything but simple. Once they start going, there's stuff flying all over the screen. You gotta keep your eyes going back and forth to make sure there's nothing else running at you or they're not throwing projectiles all of a sudden. You gotta make sure to hit them when they're flashing. There's also, I believe, an audio cue that lets you know they're able to be hit. And just when you think you're about to deliver the final hit, you're feeling good about everything. Psych, every single boss has a second phase where they do every attack again, except it's faster and more difficult to dodge. And this being the first boss, I legitimately was not sure I was gonna be able to beat it the first time I got here. It took me multiple play sessions to get through this boss, and I think I had one health left when I got through. I'm obviously much better now, but even when I was playing this to record for footage, I was doing great in this boss fight because I've beaten the entire game now, I know more how it works, and I got absolutely obliterated at the last two hits. I would have gotten like an A rank, I think, but instead it was bad. The bosses are anything but bad, though. Since you can retry them as many times as you want, it is absolutely addicting to just keep throwing yourselves at these guys until you figure out their patterns. You know how you like wait for something to come out for a very long time and then it finally releases and most of the time it's like uh, a little bit underwhelming because how could it possibly live up? Pizza Tower lives up to what I was hoping for and it has so far surpassed that that I am almost at a loss for words. This is not just one of the best games I've played in 2023, this is one of the best games I have ever played. The amount of polish and love that has gone into this, into every aspect, the visuals, the soundtrack, there is not a single piece of this game that I dislike. Alright, so this next one is hot off the presses. This is Clive and Wrench. Huge thanks again to Dinosaur Bites for giving me a review code for this one. I actually played a demo for this game, I think seven years ago on this very channel. That video is like still up and everything, like you can go watch that right now if you want to see me from seven years ago being absolutely awful at my job. Where? Where? Where are you? Oh god, shark man from the sky! Though I guess it really wasn't my job back then. Speaking of my job, you should go check out my other two channels where I upload a video every single day and I also do live streams. That's fun. Much like Pizza Tower, this is a platformer that has a lot of verticality to it, but the challenge does not come from simply reaching those heights. It is more about exploring the level and finding what stage elements will interact to help you get to your goal. Because this one is a 3D collectathon through and through. We have a main collectible, which is 10 of these, these circular stone things, they're like big coins or whatever, and then there are about 400, 300 of these little pockets watch collectibles and five keys you collect to get one of those stones I was talking about. You're able to see a list of missions each world has as soon as you enter the stage, so you're never really lost trying to find out what to do. There's also this feature that lets you point at a pocket watch if you're like missing a couple left, sort of like in Spyro how they have sparks point at gems. That can also sort of lead you in the right direction because thankfully if you've missed one thing you've probably missed other things in that same area. Worlds in this game are all based around time periods and also there's one where it's uh, just a gigantic version of the main character's house. I believe. This game is a love letter to those platformers you grew up playing. And I know that because I can feel all the love that went into this game. Like, I know it's been in production for a really long time, and I am so ecstatic to see it actually hitting shelves. 
since this is something I say for every game on this list pretty much, I enjoy the movement of this one a lot. It's part of the reason I like it so much. I think it feels amazing to be jumping around these locations, especially with how vertical the game is, because like I said before, that's not a problem for Clive, because he has these crazy high jumps. And if you're coming off the heels of another platformer, say like Mario 64 for example, you spend the entire time scaling things, like Womp's Fortress or bob Battlefield. It's really refreshing to have a game that has these crazy heights you can reach, but you can get there in a matter of seconds because of how versatile your movement set is. It's sort of like cathartic for maybe having to tackle a really tough platforming challenge. And if you're not sold on this one yet, when you're running around the hub world, you like change costume based on the time period, and you can see them flipping through all their costumes by just running in a circle here, and it is so cool and charming. This is such a great little game. If you're looking for a collectathon platformer where you can just play and have a great time, almost just relying on your regular 3D platformer instincts, you are not going to be able to put this game down, believe me. I don't know if you guys can tell that this is not a scripted video, and I've been doing things in completely random order, so next I'm going to talk about Curse Crackers, For Whom the Bell Toils. This is the only 2D game on the list, but it is a game that I have been addicted to lately. I'm a sucker for games with good movement, and even though I prefer 3D platformers, this game has some of the best movement in a 2D platformer I've ever experienced, and I'm not exaggerating. It's also really unique, too. There are some ideas in here that I haven't experienced in a game before, and it makes playing the levels here and exploring to find all of the collectibles really enticing. The main gimmick here is that you have this little bell guy that hangs out with you and you're able to throw him at enemies or actually throw him at the ground and get a nice little like bounce into the air off of him. The little dude will ricochet all over the room too until you call him back so you can end up hitting multiple enemies all at once. And Belle, this character, not to be confused with the Belle character I was talking about a second ago, she also has some unique moves she can pull off, such as this, like, sliding dash jump, which I find to be endlessly satisfying when going through these areas. And even though the game looks like a retro title, let me tell you, the jump in this game is not like one of those stiff retro jumps. This is a jump you have full control of, and with all of these tools in your arsenal, there are so many things that you can do in this game. Like, I was attempting to use the bounce move to get up to higher areas constantly and trying to, like, break the sequence of the level. Or sometimes it was just a secret, and I found secrets, and that always feels good, too. I'm not sure what they do yet, because I'm still fairly early on in the game, and I haven't collected everything in one stage yet, because there are some very well-hidden things in this game you might be looking for a while. But as far as I'm concerned, that's just more content and more time with this really fun control scheme. And with the visuals and the music being this good, Good as well. This is just the full package, what can I say? Like, I really recommend this one a lot, too. Why did I say this was the only 2D game on the list? Pizza Tower is also 2D. Hold on a second. Sorry, like, I'm just remembering that now, and that was clearly incorrect, and I'm sure people are gonna comment about that, so, uh... Edit your comments. Think about what you have done. But as far as Curse Crackers goes, I am extremely grateful to have played this game and to have been given a review code as well for this one. I think you guys should check it out. I believe there's a demo as well. You should just check that out, see what you think. And that brings us to our final game of the day, Lunastis. This is another one you might recognize if you frequent the Sonic Amateur Games Expo when it shows up. There's something you gotta know about me, I am a sucker for the N64 slash PS1 aesthetic, so when this game fell onto my plate looking and feeling exactly like what I love playing in games, I was ecstatic. I swear I'm not much of a speedrunner, but with games like this in Pizza Tower where the game feels so good to control, I kind of can't help myself but want to try and go through these levels as fast as possible. And using Hannah's double jump and spin attack, you're able to stay in the air for a long enough amount of time that so much platforming can be done in such a quick time frame that it feels absolutely divine going around these levels, even if they are pretty linear. But this game's not trying to be a giant open world thing, it's trying to be a point A to point B, get to the goal type game, and there are some branches you can take off the main path that have extra challenges, which are always really fun, since they're usually using the mechanics that the level's been teaching you about in different ways that will much more likely get you killed, so you gotta be more careful. Usually those offshoots will get you things like the four letters of Hannah's name, or just a whole bunch of paper cranes, and the paper cranes as a collectible 
They are extremely aesthetically pleasing because every time you collect one in quick succession, the pitch of the collectible noise increments ever so slightly and it's just like, just give me like nothing but a giant empty hallway with just these and I will run in a straight line for hours. The jump and air control are so precise too. I love how that feels. I think I was actually a little bit hypnotized by the gorgeous visuals and the music and I just got lost in the game. And it's hard for me to say a whole lot more other than that without spoiling the story and stuff because I want you to experience that for yourself. But these games have just been things that have really been getting through to me lately. I'm okay, I'm doing fine, but I haven't been playing a lot of games that I've been able to stick to. But then out of nowhere, I've got a couple games like these showing up and just making themselves daily fixtures in my life. I'm not always the best at finding new games that I'll enjoy. I think I end up trying a lot of games but not sticking with things. So when I get this stuck to a game that I actually want to talk about it on this channel, I hope you'll take that as, as glowing of an endorsement as I can possibly give because I am so happy to be playing games like this again. I think this has been one of the most chill and fun videos I've made in a long time. And thank you for watching the video, I appreciate you making it this far. Not a lot of people do, so if you have made it this far, let me know down in the comments, because now you're in the secret club. I'd also like to give a huge thank you to my current supporters of the channel, who are Marowacky SMG01, Brady Hilkemeyer, Mimic, Noah Wizbios, Minty, Mega Traficone, Dax, Scratch Tech 64, Danny Lee Dauber, Ty Little Tech Guy, Jeremy, Crystal, Chaos, Dork in a Hat, and on Patreon, we have Noah Wizbios again and Gino the Puppet. Also, a huge thank you to everyone who's supporting in the $1 tier. It really helps a lot. And if you have any interest in becoming a supporter yourself, you can check out either my Patreon or the join button below the video. I hope you have a good one, and I'll see you next time.